Hello and welcome to a Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and my pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. It's no accident that you're here today, friend. So please don't run off quite yet. Please stick around for a bit and let's see what the Lord has for all of us today as we spend more time in his word. And welcome back to you regular listeners. I'm so thankful that you have come back another day. What a joy to be on this journey with you. I love thinking about God's Word with you and talking about God's Word with you, and I'm just so thankful that you choose to make this a part of your day to help you focus on Him. It is not about what I have to say, friends. It's about what the Word has to say, and so I am trying my very best to point you to the Word and to encourage you, even after we talk about things, to go back and read for yourself. It is so important for us to do that. Um, I promise you that I will do my very, very best to handle God's word of truth rightly. However, I am human and I make mistakes. And so please, please go back and read. Please read it for yourself. That's why I put the uh, scripture references down in the show notes for uh, each episode. I put the references, or I try to get them all in there that I mention. Uh, if it's just in passing or a per- specific passage that we read, I want you to be able to look it up and see it for yourself. You need to see for yourself that God's word is true. And then I would encourage you to do that when you're sitting in any sort of, uh, in a sermon under your pastor, um, any sort of teaching, you look up the word, make a note of it, and then go back and make sure what you're hearing um, lines up with scripture. That is um, unfortunately one of the ways that false teachers work is they can say something that sounds good and it's just a little off. Um, but people think, oh, well, they're, um, they say they're Christians and so they uh, work at this big church or for this big ministry. So clearly everything they say must be true. We are to be um wise as serpents, shrewd as serpents, and innocent as doves. We are to double check on things. And like I said, I promise that I'm going to do my best with God's help and for his glory, but make it a habit to look up things for yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and make sure that you are um, learning what he wants you to know. Um, But I'm just so excited for us to be here together. I want you to know that I continue to pray for you. I continue to pray that the Lord would draw you closer to him, give you more of a desire to know him and his word, and that you'll want to share it, that you'll read his word, study his word, live it out and share it. And in saying that, please consider sharing this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone who you think may receive a blessing from it and know that I love to hear from you. So if you feel so lit, send me a message sometime. Let me know what the Lord's doing in your life as you're spending more time with him. Well, we're um, here on April the 2nd already, April the 2nd, 2024, and our verse for the day comes from the Minor Prophet book of Micah, Micah chapter 4, verse 2, and it reads as follows from the English Standard Version. And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Oh, I love this. Um, I'm excited for us to think about where we are in Scripture, uh, to talk about this book of prophecy, and just to see how God loves his children so much. And all the way back in these Old Testament books of prophecy, Um, He was given, even in the difficult news, when he was saying, your discipline, your punishment is coming uh, because of the way that you've turned away from me, we see hope. Um, There's always hope, and I just love that. I love that we see that here, and I'm excited for us to park here and think about it. Well, you know, if you've been... uh, on this journey with me very long that I think it is wise for us to take this time to um, think about where we are in the scripture, 
to talk about the book or the letter we're in and then get that context and and then we start with that big overview and then we will narrow down to our verse for the day and that helps us to understand more um and i love it of course you know i love all the words and all the verses but i love it when we are in these books of minor prophets prophecy and major prophecy all of them because we know that that is how God spoke to his people before Jesus came. He cared so much for them. And he had uh, first all the way back in the garden, you know, he walked with Adam and Eve, we read in the cool of the day, until sin entered the world, until Eve took, and Adam, but it started with Eve, uh, took um, somebody else's word over God's word. They had the word given to them directly from the mouth of God, um, but they took, they believed someone else over him, and sin entered, and there was that great separation. And God could have just given up and said, "Well, forget you all. I, you know, I'm done with you." But He loved His people, His creation, so much that He continued to encourage us to turn back, continued to ter- encourage them to turn back, and. Uh, he had a chosen people that uh, those Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he he uh, called them out. He sent Moses down to deliver them, and um, because he cared so much, he gave a law. He gave this this teaching and instruction and these statutes, and he told them in that law, "If you will obey me." If you will follow my ways, if you will honor me above all, I will take care of you. I will bless you. But if not, there's going to be trouble. Um, And inevitably, invariably, uh, because we are all sinners, as were they, uh, they would turn away. And then God would send, after he had Moses and Joshua and the law, he would send the prophets to encourage people to turn back to him, to say, this is what you've done um, turn back to me, repent, come back, and I will take care of you. And we read, as uh, we've talked about in the letter to the Hebrews, that that Hebrew writer opened up his letter in this way, and it gives such a wonderful example of what God did with the prophets. He says in Hebrews 1, 1, long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. So it used to be that that's how God sent messages. But now we have Jesus. We have his Holy Spirit. And aren't we thankful? Does that mean we can't learn from this time when God spoke to the prophets? Oh, no. We, of course, can learn because we read that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, correction, reproof, and training in righteousness righteousness, that the man of God might be complete, equipped for every good work. So every bit of God's word is profitable. And we see such the character of God, those glimpses that we can get of him in these books of prophecy. We see his love, we see his mercy and his grace and his redemption, his care, his provision, his protection. We see his holiness and his righteousness and his discipline. He keeps his word. If he says he's going to do something, he does it. And we see that in these books of prophecy. But there was always hope. He continued to sprinkle hope throughout these. Now, we know that the Old Testament begins with the five books of the law. Then it moved into new, moves into Old Testament history. Then into those books of wisdom and poetry where we were in those wisdom books yesterday when we were in Psalms. And then he moves into the prophets, the major prophets and the minor prophets. The major prophets were called major primarily because of the volume of their work. Minor prophets were minor. There tend to be uh, there's tend to be a smaller amount. There were uh, four major prophets: Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Lamentations, as we've talked about, was stuck right there next to Jeremiah because Jeremiah is thought to have written that. It was very small, five chapters. These minor prophets were ones that the Lord said there's 12 of those that he sent to different places. Most of them he sent to that southern kingdom of Judah after the United Kingdom of Israel had been um, 
split and was no longer just 12 tribes. It split into the 10 northern tribes and the two southern tribes. The 10 northern tribes were called Israel. The two southern tribes were called Judah. And God sent him messages through the prophets. He sent messages also to Edom, who were the descendants of Esau. That was the prophet Obadiah was given a message for them. He sent to Nineveh, uh, Jonah, and Nahum prophets, and then he sent to Isaiah, to uh, sorry Israel, Hosea, and Amos, and all the rest were to that southern kingdom of Judah, either while they were exiled uh, through Daniel and Ezekiel or before the exile or after the exile uh, with all the other prophets. And Micah is one of these prophets sent to that southern kingdom of Judah before uh, Babylon was coming, was going to come in and uh, carry some of them off into exile. And that was ordained by God that they would, that Babylon would come in. That was part of their punishment. They had turned away from God. They had um, not acted the way that he wanted to, to them to. They had no justice. They were looking out for themselves. They were idolaters. Um, they were just living in sin, and God sent them uh, this messenger to say, this is what's going to happen. But he gave that good news for people to look forward to, and I love that. I just love that. You know, uh, our unfaithfulness does not cause God not to keep his promises. And I'm so thankful. He had made a promise to Abraham back all the way before there were 12 tribes of Israel um, because Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, Jacob's other name was Israel, and his 12 sons made up the heads of those 12 tribes of Israel. God had made a promise to Abraham, and we've talked about this over and over and over again, that through him all the nations of the earth would be blessed. So it wouldn't be just this chosen people. God had that chosen people for a time, and we read that they were, what happened with them was for an example for us. But God had a much bigger plan than that. And so he was going to have a way for all the nations of the earth to be blessed. And that's what he's continuing to say in these books of prophecy. This book of Micah is, as I mentioned, it it was a pre-exilic. So it happened before that southern kingdom of Judah was carried off um, in captivity to Babylon. And it was uh, to the that southern kingdom of Judah. So we see that we can date this very well um, because Micah tells us during which kings, uh, who was reigning when he wrote this. It's thought that he wrote this sometime between 735, I believe, B.C. and about 710 B.C. And that's based on um, when these kings were in uh, were on the throne. It says, The word of the Lord that came to Micah of Moresheth in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Now, God gave um, uh, Micah some information about what was going on with uh, with Samaria, which is that northern kingdom of Israel, uh, because that was right around the time when the Assyrians were going to come in and invade. They came in, I believe, in 722 and conquered that northern kingdom of Israel because of their unfaithfulness. God had sent Assyria to be um, his his tool at that time. And uh, most of the rest of this, though, was to that southern kingdom. But listen to how Micah opens up. He says, Hear you, peoples, all of you. Pay attention, O earth, and all that is in it, and let the Lord God be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth, and the mountains will melt under him, and the valleys will split open like wax before the fire, like waters poured down a steep place. All this for the transgression of Jacob. So when you see that, Jacob, that's talking about Israel. And it was the Israel at that time that was going to suffer both the the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, I believe. Um, It says, And this for the transgression of Jacob, and this for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what is the high place of Judah? Is it not Jerusalem? 
Therefore, I will make Samaria a heap in the open country, a place for planting vineyards, and I will pour down her stones into the valley and uncover her foundations. All her carved images shall be beaten to pieces, and her wages shall be burned with fire, and all her idols I will lay waste. As far from, uh, For from the fee of a prostitute she gathered them, and to the fee of a prostitute they shall return. God had warned them to have no other gods before him and to not go after idols but they that was one of the big things that they had done and so he um talks about he gives a mic of this message and then in chapter two it's a message of woe to those who are oppressing his people and then he in chapter three uh, talks about how the rulers and the prophets those who were false prophets uh, they are called out because they are not speaking the truth and um, I want you to hear this. It says, um, and Micah is able to say this because he he knew that God was with him and God had given him this word. In chapter 3, verse 8, and I'm going to start there and then read up to our verse for the day. In chapter 4, it says, but as for me, and this is Micah talking, I am filled with power, with the spirit of the Lord and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Hear this, you heads of the house of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel, who detest justice and make crooked all that is straight, who build Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. Its heads give judgment for a bribe. Its priests teach for a price. Its prophets practice divination for money. Yet they lean on the Lord and say, Is not the Lord in the midst of us? No disaster shall come upon us. Therefore, because of you, and those who are speaking untruth is what that means. <clears throat> Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins and the mountain of the house a wooded height. And that is exactly what was getting ready to happen. But listen to this. Here's some of that hope. In chapter 4, though, it says, It shall come to pass in the latter days, so after this, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and it shall be lifted up above the hills, and people shall flow to it. And then here's our verse for the day. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem." Do you hear that change, that good news? Even though just at the end of three, he talked about how Jerusalem's going to be laid waste. We've already talked about how Israel was going to have trouble. But then it's like, oh, but there's good news coming. In those latter days, it's going to be built back up by the Lord. And many peoples, I love this, many nations shall come and say, in other words, and tell other people to come with them, come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. I love that because it was going to be that after this, the people are going to encourage others to come to come with them to the God of Jacob, to the house of the God of Jacob, so that they can be taught his ways and that we may walk in his paths. This prophecy here is part of the gospel. It's the good news that even though all of us are sinners, God has made a way for us to come back and have relationship with him. And and we will be encouraged to come to him and that he will teach us and that we can walk in his paths for out of Zion, and that's the name for Jerusalem, out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. When we read that law there, that can be a generic instruction or teaching uh, from the Lord. And that is exactly what happened when Jesus came um, because that word went forth, that word made flesh came forth from Jerusalem. And that's what's happening now. You know, what is so neat is when you read the rest of Micah in the next chapter, 
there is the prophecy about that one who will be born in Bethlehem. I love this, and I just want you to see how it it ties all together. He says in five two, but you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler of Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient of days. That was talking about Jesus. And then we see at the latter half of five that that remnant would be delivered. And then we see in chapter seven, this encouragement to wait for the God of their salvation. Even though there was difficulties, even though this difficulty was coming, and it was going to be another almost a hundred years from the time that Micah was prophesying, maybe a little more, um, until until this siege happened from Babylon. And then another 70 years that the people were in Babylon. And then there was going to be, um, you know, a long time, that 400-year intertestament period before Jesus came on the scene. But it was good news that that was coming. It's that prophecy that they could hold to. And now... This applies to us because those of us who have been told that good news have can come to the Lord. And many nations, not just the Jews, not just those the nation of Israel, but it's for anyone for who would believe. All the nations of the earth would be blessed. All of the families of the earth would be blessed. It's whosoever will believe that's the good news that's the mystery of the gospel that we read was hidden for ages but then after jesus came you know paul talks about how he was a a steward of the gospel he was entrusted with this this message of this mystery and the understanding of the mystery that it wasn't just for the jews that they could know the lord it was for the jews and gentiles if you look up that word that many nations and those peoples, that's talking about uh, people groups. It's not just one nation. It's many peoples. And then what is so neat, and I'm so thankful that God uh, made a way for all of us to come to him, any who would, because we can. It's all based on faith. We've talked about this over and over again. If we can, If we believe God, Uh, Just like with Abraham, he believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. If we believe God and trust him and trust his plan, trust that Jesus is the one that he sent for us uh, to pay the penalty that we owed and believe exactly what Jesus did for us, we too can be saved. And that was that was just such the good news. And he will teach us his ways with his word, with his Holy Spirit, and that we may walk in his path. It is such good news. And then at all the way at the end of our scripture, all the way in Revelation, we see that God allowed John to see that there would be a time when there were those from every tribe and every tongue and every nation under heaven um, who were worshiping the Lord. And that was going to be in that new Jerusalem, that new city coming down. And I am just so thankful and so looking forward to that. I'm thankful for the time that we have here, but there's going to be a day when it all comes together and I am looking forward to being there forever and ever. And all of us can have that if we'll believe. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.